I, I do love you, Tom. Connor, uh, V8 Sleuth. Um, Brody, uh, NASCAR debut at Indianapolis, clean sweep here. How's this stack up as far as like best weeks of your life? Yeah, it's obviously pretty awesome. Uh, we've had a fantastic year so far uh, with um, you know our team and you know going to this new era and uh, a lot of hard work's gone into it. Every team works hard, but um, yeah, we sort of set out a plan and you know end of last year and and it's all sort of gone to plan, which is you know really cool to see. And it's just from all the hard work that you know the whole team's put in. So yeah, it's this weekend and will we'll be one of those that I'll cherish forever. Uh, Shannon, um, you know, I guess it's been an interesting couple of weeks, silly season and whatnot, but what does it mean for your team to, you know, put all that behind and, uh, you know, go out and be as dominant as you have been? I think Barry said it well on Friday where it was, you know, if we let what's happened in the last two weeks affected, it was all a mental thing. And the biggest thing is we wanted to make sure that we continued on the journey we've been on in 2023 and make sure that, you know, our, our goal is a team's championship and a driver's championship. So however that plays out. Um, and we've done absolutely everything we can this weekend. And big credit to the boys and Brody for doing a good job. And is it a case of, uh, I guess, like, you know, I guess one side of the ha garage happy and got to sort of pick up the other side of the garage? A uh, bit of a tough weekend for Will? Yeah, it was a tough weekend for Will. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And, you know, I'm sure that, that you know, Brody and Will and the engineers are working hard to try and um, sort out what's going on. But um, we'll, we'll come out and stand down stronger than ever and keep going. To Thomas and Cam, the lap one battle, obviously nice and close. But, uh, but uh, yeah, Tom, did you, did you, you said you owed him one. Was that, <laughs> was that you um, repaying the favour? Or, yeah, can you both talk us through that? Um, no, it was just good racing, really. Um, he obviously had the pace, so um, yeah, wanted to. Well, I think it's what's best for the team, really. And, and he, you know, he put a hard charge in for for Brody at the end there, and and we managed to get Perkat and hang on to third. So really great result for the team. Two team cars on the podium. It's been a while since that's happened, so I think we'll uh, we'll cherish that one. I just wanted to show the team that we could race hard without taking each other out, so. <laughs> we would have done that yesterday, mate. Jay. <laughs> uh, and Cam as well, like, I mean. Um, yeah, well, that was Chaz. <laughs> uh, it obviously been a, a little while since the last podium. I mean, you know, is this sort of almost like a, you know, you've had the pace, but it, like, is it a monkey off the back or anything like that to just try and, well, to finally get back up here? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a monkey off the back. It's... Um, had a lot of bad luck, I think, this year, and then obviously all the the parity woes have um, you know poured fuel on the, on the fire with that respect. So um, you know we've just been working hard and, and making sure we're the fastest forward, and and um, you know it was awesome to roll out this weekend with a bit of a different setup and and um, you know be up there with you know fast cars in the races. Um, Randall did an amazing job this weekend, and um, you know so did the other boys. So it's good that we're going in the right you know trajectory. But um, we didn't win the race, so we need more. Last for me, Tim, uh, you know, challenging season, but, I mean, really, really good weekend for you guys, just, uh, yeah, from your point of view. Oh, look, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a tough year, so it's been a bit of a drought for us. You know, we, we're used to being on the podium, you know, most weekends, and so it's, it's been tough for the team. So this is a good, you know... A good uplift for the team, a good confidence booster. Um, you know, we're certainly not confident that the same will be repeated at, at other rounds, but certainly this weekend. And you know, it's a, you know, and fantastic for Thomas. Not did not only did he get his first podium, but he got his first, second, and third. So you know, that's I'm sure is going to be a sign of things to come in the future. So it's great, and um, and we're pleased. And obviously, JC got some strong, strong top ten results as well. So. Um, it's been a, a happy hunting ground for us. We've had good car speed as a team here um, over the years. And so I think that sort of played into our hands, as does the sort of low degradation um, for the tyres. Mark Fogarty, Speed Cafe. Brody, heading for the Enduros and then, you know, the run to the end of the season. Is it hard not to start thinking about the championship after such a dominant weekend? I think you sort of think about it all the time, but um, I sort of just jump in my car and do my job. Um, you know, the results, if you have good results, the championship, you know, looks after itself. And, and um, yeah, I'm pretty excited going to Enduros to, you know, share the car with David Russell. He's done a fantastic job for our team in the last two years. And, uh, you know, we've got two, two days coming up that he's going to be driving the car. And, and um, so, yeah, it's 
I um, uh, can't wait for Enduros and honestly pretty excited to be back at Sandown too. And no reason why you shouldn't, but are you expecting the team and yourself to be particularly strong in the Enduros? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I have no doubts that, 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 uh, you know, that we'll be strong. So, um, yeah, we've been strong all year. We just have to minimise mistakes and execute on the weekends and, and um, you know, we'll be at the front. OK. Cam, um, I gather you're off to the States tomorrow and if Boy, I understand it, you hear that? you'll be at the Daytona race next weekend. Will you be talking to people there, looking about, uh, you know, trying to see if you can, you know, set up drives of some sort of NASCAR next year? I plan on having a few beers in the grandstands and <laughs> I'm enjoying the warm weather and, and having a bit of a holiday. Um, the trip earlier, earlier in the year was, you know, trying to get a gig and this one, I'm taking my girlfriend over. She's never been to America and, and have a bit of fun and, um, yeah, we'll hang out with Ford and Monster and, and all the people, but um, it's more about a holiday. But you will talk to people there about possibilities. I'm sure I'll have my resume in my back pocket, but um, <laughs> yeah, can't confirm or deny I'll talk to people. Go easy, go, go, go easy on him. He's, he's still recovering from the press conference two days ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Where's Thank Barry? You, That's what hey, I want to uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to know where Barry is. Yeah. I believe he's on his way to Fiji. Oh, <laughs> you great. should announce your NASCAR deal now then. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a stressful two weeks. I'm pretty sure he's going to enjoy his trip. <laughs> and Tim, a lot of Mustangs in the results. Is this a breakthrough weekend for Ford or is it circuit specific? I think it's a fantastic result for Ford this weekend because it has been a very dry spell for them. But um, as I said, you know, Every circuit has its different characteristics and certainly this circuit appears to, to suit the Ford. Um, you know, I don't 100% know why. I mean, certainly it's a very low degradation circuit for tyres as opposed to where we were and we struggled, you know, three weeks ago. Um, and yeah, we just have to go to Sandown and, and learn some more. But certainly, you know, I think we're fairly confident that there's, there's still issues. Uh, and we know what we sort of did for Townsville was a bit of a Band-Aid and it's got negative um, issues with it as well. You know, nothing's for free. But, you know, we've just got to rely on supercars and, and Ford and all the CFD work that's going on. And, and you know, obviously everyone knows there's some, some more work going on tomorrow to try and fine tune it because the reality is, you know, parity these days is such a fine line. You know, it's, uh, you know, we've gone from cars that were very different and there was so much team IP in cars that there isn't that anymore. And that's why you send people like Brody, you know, they're, they're excelling and they're, they're beating teams that have been super competitive in this championship for years because we're all playing with the tra same train set now. And I think the, you know, I think supercars have realised, as we've talked about on many occasions, that the tools they need for determining parity, you know, whether it's wind tunnels, whether it's um, different types of, you know, transient dynos, they need those now. And, and all of that sort of get burbling along in the background. And so we've just got to sit back, do our part, help where we can, which we're doing tomorrow. And, um, and as a team, just focus on executing well every weekend. And that's what we did this weekend. We just, we executed well. And, um, and yeah, there was a, a, a greater percentage of Fords in the top 10. I can't sit here and tell you exactly why, because I have no idea. Is there any prospect, if not expectation, that the testing here tomorrow will possibly result in a short-term change, that something new for Sandown for the Mustang? I, I can't honestly answer that question because that's down to the homologation teams, it's down to Ford, it's down to supercars. You know, we're, we're sort of passengers in it. Um, would we like to see a change? Absolutely. You know, we saw we struggled for straight line speed at Sydney Motorsport Park, and that's sort of a bit of a, a consequence of the change that we made for Townsville. But, you know, when you sort of rush these things through and, you, you, know, you know, there's always a negative for every positive thing, you, you know, you try and implement. But, you know, at the moment, we're not really focusing on that. We're just trying to execute as well we can. You know, we've learned a lot with this new aero package over the last three rounds. You know, we rolled it out at Tansville and literally the car was completely different in practice to what we're expecting. And the guys worked hard and we actually got ourselves back into a window at Tansville. We went to Sydney, very different circuit. It's aero, it's tyre. And then we've come here and it's a different characteristic again. So 
you know, you're always sort of filling your toolbox with all the information that you learn along the way. And, um, you know, it's, we'll just, we'll help as much as we can, but try and execute as best we can ourselves. Uh, Daniel Herrera from Speak FA. Uh, Thomas, you mentioned before that race, I think it was, that you were, you know, trying to um, not be distracted by silly season things that were going on in the background. Do we take that as indicative that you do or don't know your future for 2023? Uh, I think it just... For 24. For 24. Uh, I think just take it as that I wasn't really worrying about that because I just wanted to concentrate on driving the car and uh, do the best job I can because up until this point, well, as Tim said, it's been a challenging year um, in many different aspects. And I think to just come here and focus on the job that I needed to do and our car 55 crew needed to do. It's um, it's tough trying to execute everything. There's a lot that goes into these races. So um, yeah, obviously yesterday was a, for me as a breakthrough podium. And then I think we showed today that wasn't a fluke and we've come back and got a second and, an, and another third. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to block that out and concentrate on driving. So going forward then off the back of your success this weekend, do we expect say a new Thomas Randall? In what aspect? <laughs> Just sounds like, well, sounds like you're much more relaxed, more confident. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess yesterday was nice to get that off my back. You know, it's it's, it's been a long time coming trying to get a solo podium. So, um, yeah, I was probably a bit more relaxed today and, uh, you know, just concentrating on what I needed to do and... Yeah, it's a nice way to lead into the Enduros and I'm looking forward to teaming up with Gary Jacobson. Um, so far, we've got off to a really good start in our relationship. Um, had a couple of test days, been rained out a little bit, but he's had some good laps. He's, uh, he's great to be around, fantastic personality, and we've spent a lot of time in the simulator just working on a few things and um, I think it's going to be really good leading into Sandown. And for you given your incident with Chaz yesterday and for Cam, given yours with Shane, nothing got penalised yesterday. Has there been a, a loosening up of driving standards since Sydney? Are you asking Cam or me? Both. Cam, you go. <laughs> I think um, at Beardo Motorsport Australia, they always look at every you know incident individually and... Um, they're the, the umpires at the end of the day and they're always trying to make the right decision. So, um, you know, sometimes we may knock them, but they're only doing their job and um, sometimes you're on the rough end and sometimes it goes your way. But, like, I didn't think I did anything wrong yesterday. Shane will debate that and that's kind of motor racing, isn't it? But um, I would like to see, you know, a little bit more play on and a little bit more bumping and, and allow that. And, and um, you know, if you hit someone, you should be able to, you know, be able to, you know, get it back and, and not get a penalty. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Beardo promotes fair racing. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Brody, you just came from NASCAR where they are much more liberal with driving standards. What do you think about the balance in supercars? Oh, I think it's, honestly, you can't really compare both. I mean, those guys race week in, week out, 36, 38 times a year. So if you know you take someone out the next week, you can expect a return serve, and we only have 12 rounds. So I think it's a fair bit different in that aspect. And uh, I think you know the the ruling this year has been been quite good, and you know the precedent got set um, at Perth uh, with you know Shane and myself. And I, I think the racing's been been quite good, and allows allows us to have a you know have a go, and and um, you know promotes more passing. Um, but if everything gets you know regulated too too tightly, it's you know, it makes it really hard to pass someone. Um, you know, we've got 25 drivers that are all you know, really good at what they do, so it's really hard to pass people. And for, for Brody and Cam, given you've both done some speedway stuff, at this track in particular, it looks like driver's left is a preferable side of the grid, yet pole is on driver's right. Would you like to have the option, if you're the pole sitter, of choosing which side you get to start from? I haven't really thought about that, to be honest. And no. Yeah, I've, I said it a few years ago, that should be thought about, but um, yeah, it is what it is. It's like, I think it was last year, I got pole, but then there was water or oil on the on the track in front of me, so you get pole, but you're actually penalised, so it would have been nice to you know be able to change if, if um, the option was there, but you know, the rules would have to change, right? Yeah. 
Shannon. The team has been where it's never been before. You're leading both championships, the dominant team mm -hmm. out there. It brings, I would imagine, a new pressure to the organisation. Has, has the team felt that and how has it been coping with that? Yeah, as you like, as we've gone through each weekend this year, like we, we rolled out strong with Brody in Newcastle, um, and then have continued from there really strongly. But um, yes, it does come with new pressures because obviously now our expectations change. Um, you know, we would have probably been very happy with a fourth and a fifth last year, whereas now if we're not on the podium, it's you know we're questioning ourselves. So it definitely does bring more pressures. Um, but the team's handling it really well. Um, nothing's changed. We're doing the same things we've always done. Um, you know, doing all the one percenters as best as we can, and obviously it's paying off. We've put a lot of hard work into Gen 3, as Brody said, so um, everything we're doing is paying off, but, you know, how we operate as a, as a team and, I guess, as a family, that, that's not changed. Craig Ravel inside Supercars. Uh, for Shannon and Tim, we've had two back-to-back two-day races, of course, at Sydney Motorsport Park, you guys were feeling like it was about a month there, but how did you find this weekend's two-day format? You go first, Tim. Uh, uh, look, I mean, it's a tricky one because you end up being here, well, percentage of the team on Thursday anyway, and so there's the argument, well, we should run on Friday, but then the counter-argument is that, you know, we end up with most of our fans coming on Saturday and Sunday. So when you compress it all into two days, for those that are coming on Saturday and Sunday, they actually get better bang for their buck because, you know, they're largely coming to see supercars and the more they see of us, you know, the happier they are. So, yeah, it's it's a tricky one. You know, it's um, I think there's arguments for and against and, you know, obviously we've got a bit of a mix of both and, yeah, there's arguments both ways. Was this weekend better? Uh, it's hard on the teams, you know, when you've got, pra you know, two practice sessions, quality and a race on a Saturday, you know, it's, it's pretty full on. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, you, you've got to look at it both ways, you know, for the people that come on a Saturday, if we did those two practice sessions on Friday, not much for them to see on Saturday, just, you know, a quality and a race. So, you know, I think probably the two day, you know, would be my preference because that is when the bulk of our fans come on Saturday and Sunday. But park up on the Friday would be what you'd want. Yeah, but I mean, uh, the, uh, logistically, that would be better for us. But we just uh, we send a skeleton crew on on Thursday anyway. You know, as a two as a four car team, you know, we only send half a dozen people. It's literally you just can't have people wandering around the paddock while we're dropping the tailgate. So we understand why we've got to do it. But the bulk of the team flew in on uh, on Friday. Shannon. Yeah, probably very much the same. We're the same. We send about six people on Thursday. Um, which makes Friday relatively easy and you, you feel like you're, you know, you're set up by about two o'clock in the afternoon waiting for, to do something. Um, but then Saturday and Sunday for the crew, particularly the car crew, is very busy. Um, but it's just a balancing act because some days you'll be there on a Friday practice day and you don't feel like much is going on either. So it is definitely a balancing act. And I get, you know, exactly what Tim said, that the fans are here to see us race and that's what they want to do. Um, but, you know, I know yesterday was that jam-packed. I couldn't even put in a five minute signing session with the boys, but you know, that meant we were on track more. So it's just a fine line between them, where the balance is. And Brody, since you're in the centre, you've come back from the NASCAR experience, which is a very compressed schedule by comparison to supercars. How are you finding these, uh, these meetings as we're doing them in the two day format? Yeah, I think um, I quite like the two day formats, but I think it's, yeah, like, like Tim said, very hard to condense it down anymore. And, and um, yeah, we only race 12 times a year, and we um, all, all fly, um, you know, commercial, and um, you know, come back from America, and they you know ch charter planes and fly fly in and out to every round. So um, you know, if there's a plane that gets cancelled and it's got all the crew on it, and if they have to fly in for, you know fly on Friday afternoon, then that team's probably probably not running the next day. So it's a bit different. Um, can't really compare both. Um, I think you know what we did this weekend is probably the best it's going to get, really. And for Cam and Thomas, what does this result this weekend do for your confidence levels heading off to Sandown and Bathurst? Because obviously they're two trophies. You've won it before, Cam, and they're two of the best trophies in the, uh, in the season. 
Would you let him go again? <laughs> it's definitely a confidence booster, um, certainly for us. So, well, I think it's just a confidence booster for the whole team because, as Tim said, it's it's been a challenging year. I mean, it, I guess it all started trying to build four Gen 3 cars over the summer. The, the, the guys and girls are putting, you know, 18, 20-hour days in. Like, it was just crazy to get four cars on the grid for Newcastle. And, and you know, there's been... You know, there's been uh, incidents, fires, all sorts thrown at us, and um, and we keep coming back, um, fighting. And and I think this weekend was a true show of grit from the team, from everyone. And I think it's the perfect way to lead into the enduros. So, um, yeah, bring it on, I say. I wouldn't say it changes my confidence a great deal, but um, you know, it's nice to see a back of a Camaro and and half you know be close and, and nearly be able to touch it but um you know it's good that you know we got on the podium and we're relatively competitive quality we we got smashed but um you know we just keep chipping away um we're going in the right way right trajectory in the right way and hopefully um we can keep closing that gap and hopefully we can get some wins i'm gonna have to <coughs> decide uh add a couple more um shannon in the scheme of uh, a weekend where Ford were quite, well, probably dominant to a degree in terms of quantity in the top 10, I mean, does that make it even more impressive, Brody's performance this weekend? Yeah, I, I'm probably not the right person to be uh, answering that one. That's probably a barrier question. Um, though, you know, Brody did an exceptional job all weekend, uh, regardless of where anyone else was behind him. Um, there was a lot of blue behind him. Um, but, yeah, I won't comment too much on it. I just know that Brody did an amazing job and that's what we care about. Uh, for, uh, for anyone who wants to jump in, this is the last sprint event of the year, so it's the last time we have fastest lap points this year. We don't seem to talk about them much. Do you like the system? Do you dislike it? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I think it's a good balance between, um, you know, having long races for the year and, you know, short races. And um, to be honest, it's pretty, pretty hard. It's, you know, the, the short 20 lap races were actually, um, you know, quite, quite good in a way. We didn't really have to, sa you know, save tyres. We could push the whole time. And, and um, but uh, yeah, I, I still prefer the longer races over the short ones. I think, you know, it plays a bit more onto, you know, strategy and whatnot. Tom, your thoughts on fastest lap points, like them, dislike them? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good incentive, but I guess if you at a high deg track, if you set the fastest lap, you probably blow the tyre off it. So, um, yeah, that's the give and the take for that. So, um, but yeah, I haven't got a fastest lap yet, but um, I guess it probably doesn't matter now. But um, yeah, sand down being an enduro, I guess it's, yeah, as Brody said, you're going to throw a lot of strategy into it. So 161 laps there is going to be pretty intense. Intense indeed. I can't wait. Guys, thank you. And girls, oh, thank you very much. Uh, that's the OTR Super Sprint oh. press conference run and done. See you at Sandown. I like the faucet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cam. Uh, don't worry about me, Chad. <laughs>